Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. You guys, there are so many things in life that throw us for a curveball, especially if we're multi-passionate. And sometimes we go through seasons of a lack of clarity and seasons of true clarity, but it's all part of our journey to get to that end purpose, that end calling that God has laid on our hearts. And today's guest is going to tell us a little bit about her journey as an artist and someone who has a heart for ministry. And that's how I'm going to phrase it and how she's gone through seasons of life. And now in this particular season has really come to, I guess, full circle with clarity around what she's doing and seeing how God has worked in her all of these years and bringing it full circle. And I'm excited to have the conversation because I think we've all been in this place, especially if you're creative and you're an artist, it, it's very hard to create a personal brand and put yourself out there when you know what you're creating is so subjective and it could have different meaning, different influence on you know, various people. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to talk about just those seasons of life and business and how to navigate them. So I am going to bring on to the show, Susan Morris, and welcome to the Robin Graham show. Uh, Thank you, Robin. I'm so, it's a joy to be with you. Oh my goodness. So a little backstory, how Susan and I met, we, we did a mastermind together to learn how to podcast basically. And we both had had podcasts already, but we learned all of these strategies for growing our podcast and monetizing it and all that good stuff. But you know how life is, you, you, you connect online, you meet people, but then it's like, well, everybody's so busy. You don't really like connect, connect after the fact. And, but I had joined Susan's email list because I found her so inspiring and I just, I have to share, she's just this light of beauty. And if you guys want something just almost miraculous hitting your inbox periodically, join her email list. And I will put the link to her website in the show notes. Yeah, because every single time I'm like, okay, that resonated with me. Okay, that was beautiful. Okay, that's a new perspective on something. So I want to encourage you at the end of the show to go to the show notes and click on Susan's website and join her email list if you feel so inclined. But I tell you, you will be inspired. So, and you'll get the inside scoop on her art, which is absolutely phenomenal. All right, Mm -hmm. Susan, I've babbled enough. Will you please tell (laughs) the listeners a little bit about you and your journey to get to where you are today? Okay, first of all, I want to say Robin is the best cheerleader and coach <laughs> because she hits respond to the, a lot of those emails and sends me back such encouragement and it's been a light in my life. So oh. thank you for being you because and I really you. appreciate how you show up in the world. It's a blessing for real. So, okay, when I think back um, on the journey that got me here to this moment right here, I think back and I can envision a little girl full of life but also feel full of big feelings that she didn't always know what to do with. Um, I grew up a PK, a preacher's kid. My father was a pastor and I married a preacher and I was really happy about that. That's really how I envisioned my life going because I honestly, I can't remember a day not loving Jesus and just feeling this desire that it's like, I wanted to serve him and honor him with all of my life, whatever that looked like. And the way I saw that modeled growing up was through the local church. And I mentioned that because I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. Um, So substitute like full-time ministry or the church for another profession or path that you've chosen. And I think so many times we can get, we can um, go in paths that are right in front of us that we're familiar with or, um, Maybe it's, you know, a family business or whatever the situation. I think sometimes we take all of our passions and giftings and, and we, we, we walk the path that we can envision right in front of us because it's what we see. And um, sometimes that can even mean, I think, some people pursuing higher education or college because everybody in their family has. And so it's like they don't even think about that not being an option. They just take that path or like I mentioned, being in the family business because they're family. So why wouldn't you be in the family business? But I feel like with that kind of thinking, we we tend to put God in a box. Um, and I think that that's the easy route sometimes of walking the path right in front of us. 
And I think we do that sometimes too, because we don't see another path. And honestly, through the years, I've wondered if we don't see another path because it's in us. And we're looking for this other validation of like, I want to see where somebody else has done it. It's like we other people inspire us. And when we don't see that, I've really felt like, well, maybe it's because we're the ones supposed to start that path and, and walk further and be that that sign to somebody else, you know, that there's something within us. So it's it's been interesting to me to see that as I've gotten older and my my journey, I feel like it's looked more like an undoing or an unlearning through the seasons now. And and a getting back to this simplicity and pureness of who God made me to be in the world. And I don't say that with any regret for any season I've walked through, the path that I've walked through, because I know without a doubt that I wouldn't be who I am today if I have not walked that path. So um, I do believe that. But I also recognize that those seasons and those experiences along this path is what drove me to a deeper connection with God. And a lot of that was out of desperation um, that I've developed um, these rhythms and practices to connect with him um, and, and not connect with him through someone else. And from somebody that, you know, grew up a preacher's kid has been in ministry my whole life. I, I know the value of that. I mean, it's so important and it's part of this walk of faith is so important, but it's not more important than our individual connection to our creator that from the beginning he longed for. I mean, when he made us, he wanted a family, you know, mm-hmm. it's like he said it was good. I mean, he, he loves us and wants this relationship with us. And it's so easy though, for us to always have that relationship through some, someone or something else. We can go to church and feel the presence of God and think, I just experienced God. Yes, you did. But there is this deeper thing that it's only sometimes in those seasons where we are desperate and we realize this is all great, but I got to go deeper. So that's where I got a few times um, to where I just was like, okay, God. And I, and I say that I had, I grew up in church. I grew up with a relationship with God. So it's like, I prayed, I had my devotion time. So I'm not saying all of a sudden I was like, I need to have quiet time with God. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about creating, intentionally creating a space to connect with our creator, with your creator. And it's, it was like in those moments, he reminded me whose I was and who I am. And the natural outflow of that of, of those, that connection, um, has been me putting, um, putting my hand to all the things in my heart that he put there. And, um, some of that's looked like starting the podcast six or seven years ago, diving deeper into, um, art that, um, I had already always kind of played around with, it was creative in different ways, but it's like, I just found that really blossoming and going to a different level. And then, more recently, it's been this seasonal, she is awakening seasonal, seasonal journal um, that I know we're going to talk about, but that's, that's, that's kind of a, a little backstory into the, some seasons and journey. So Susan, you said so many uh, inspiring things, of course, but I want to point out that you mentioned the word relationship so many times. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think this is, and this is something that, you know, when I was growing up, it was more of a, of a legalistic requirement to be in the church and, you know, all of those things. And we were, I was so afraid to do Mm -hmm. things wrong because, you know, it was, we were taught that there were these rules and you had to do this and you had to behave this way. And you have, and when you grow up in that environment, you're, you don't create or develop a relationship with God. And so for many, many years, I had faith, but I didn't have that relationship. And I love yeah, how you yeah. emphasize that that has been so key because without the relationship, we can't just sit with him, with God yeah. as, as our creator, as our friend, as his child, and, and really focus on that communion with him, so mm-hmm. to speak. And yeah. I know that sounds yeah. maybe a little over the the top, but it's that relationship that I think moves us forward on our journey versus feeling 
fearful, overwhelmed and stuck. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you no, emphasize, I- emphasize that. Yeah. And you know, it's, it, it's funny how, you know, you've, you've said you're multi-passionate and you have your art mm-hmm. and you love to minister and you have five kids and, you know, you have all of these things going on in your life, but you always came back to that grounding, that foundation of your faith yeah. and that relationship. Yeah. So no matter what season you were in, you found that solid ground in yes. your faith. And I love that. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I love when you said, you know, that you put your hand on your heart and you can feel like all that he's, you know, put on your heart to do mm-hmm. and how yeah. your art has come from that and from those emotions and from those feelings. Mm-hmm. And some of your yeah. art is, I think, more abstract, right? Yeah, oh, def- definitely. And it's yeah. just, it's, it's stunning. And sometimes oh, just by the title, you know, you can see mm. the, the emotion that you put into the, the paintings. Yeah. And I just, oh, I love, love, love your work. So, yeah. um, okay. So let's talk about She's Awakening. As I okay. love the concept of the journal series and doing it by seasons. So let's mm-hmm. talk a little bit about that because I would love okay. for the listeners to not only feel that inspiration from you, but to to tap into the resource to help them grow on their faith journey. Because I think, you know, when, especially if you grew up in a, in a, an environment, one without faith or two with that more structured legalistic type faith, I think it's so right incredibly amazing to develop that relationship. And that's what your journal series is going to give people the opportunity to do. So let's talk about it. Let's dive in. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm super excited about it because um, like you mentioned, multi-passionate, I feel like I very much relate to that, that title. And so I've always had different things that I feel very passionate about and being in ministry and going up in the church, which I had a very positive experience. You know, I know a lot of people that grew up and their dads were preachers. There was like, there was the joke, the preacher's kid and all that. It's like, I have no complaints. I mean, my family life was great. My dad was the same at home as he was, in the, you know, what I saw him preaching. So it's like, I had a great life that I'm very thankful for. So I don't want anything that I'm saying to come across, like I'm bashing any, any of that. Um, I guess for, and and I'm just speaking for my own journey, I guess I just found where I was trying to, because I guess I grew up with to give, to live for God 100%, which I wanted to do. It's like it had to come through this one avenue. But even into my adult life, when I stopped and looked at where fruit came from my life, it was outside of the church. And and, and, and honestly, that's what lit me up more. It lit me up to share the life and love of God outside of the walls in different ways where people weren't necessarily expecting it. And it's not like I'm trying to hide or trick somebody at all. I just think God is just so much bigger um, and people experience him, him in so many different ways. And so many times we we kind of have created like, okay, come, like inviting somebody to come experience God when it's like, he's like, hello, I'm everywhere. <laughs> and I can speak to people however I want. And that we've kind of limited how people can experience and come to God. And, um, and, and it's interesting in the whole art thing and in, in branding and stuff, that was a struggle. For, so even like saying that, that's, that's a, it was str- a struggle and can sometimes still be, I've gotten a lot better in that. But as a believer, I think sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's um, all about God and, and pointing people to him. So it was almost like I grew up with this to point for anybody to look at me was taking away from God. It's kind of the way I felt, you know, it's like I'm, I'm attracting attention to myself when it should all be about God. So that's really was my framework. And so it was like, okay, I'm doing ministry and it was all this, but yet I could not push down all the stuff that wanted to come out in different expressions from that. And so what I felt like I've learned through the the past years, through some hard times of really diving in deeper is that um, he he's the one that made me and designed me. And so even if I have trouble kind of making it make sense. But I think the reason I have trouble making it make sense is because I'm still focused on what I can see around me. And 
So I think when I say like talk about the creating space and connecting with, I think that's why it's so important because in those times when um, uh, Psalms 46.10 says, be still and know that I am God. And that's what those times are for me. It's, it's me getting still, which is very hard to do in the world we mm-hmm. live in, uh, getting still and connecting with him and him reminding me who I am and that I was his idea. And it's like in that time, my purpose and passions, it's like they're strengthened by him. You know, it's like in that moment, I, I have no doubt of like, I was your idea, all the things I feel you put them there, whether anybody gets them or not. And it's like his voice is louder and it's more true than any other voice that is coming out in in that moment. And I think that's why it's so critical that I emphasize this. Um, It's just, it's our life source. It's our life source. It's not a religious duty, but it's a, it's a, a practice that I had to become intentional about to survive, you know? Um, So that's what, and and that's helped me become more confident in coming to the understanding of, I'm not in competition with God, (laughs) you know, me having a brand or somebody saying, um, I mean, putting something out there, it's not selfish. It's not taking away anything from God. And it's like, I have just totally flipped on that um, and feeling like that's selfish or like I'm trying to bring glory to myself because I've realized how much glory that brings to God. I mean, you look at our kids, when my kids flourish and I see their giftings and them thriving. I'm not going, well, I hope you say who your mama is when you get to the end of whatever you just did and, <laughs> you know, give me some praise. I'm like looking at them like shine, baby shine. You know, I'm like so proud yeah. of like, I see who you are and it brings me such joy for, to see who you are. And I think that's the way it is with God. And we see yeah. that with everything else he made. With, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of all into the spring thing since just did this journal and I'm kind of in that, but you look at nature, we look at the flowers and it's like, they are who they are, who they were created to be. And the sunflower's not going, oh, I feel awkward because I'm a little taller than the little daisy down here. So I'm going to kind of cower over. It's like, you know, they're who they are. And it's like, yeah. it's just an example, I think to us of like, let's just be who we are, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, and like, we just talked about like with you, I mean, cheer each other on. It's like, I see you, Robin. And I love seeing you image God through everything that you do and how you show up. And it's like, we're, nobody's in competition. We're not in competition with God. Yeah. And it's like, he's cheering us on louder than anybody else. And just wants us to be who he made us to be. Oh, I love this so much. And, you know, Susan, you said something and it brought me to the thought of comparison and how often women especially mm-hmm. will get on social media. Oh, yeah. And this is why I'm so passionate about not starting a business on social media, start your business and start growing it with a solid foundation. And then Mm -hmm. go ahead and go on social media and build relationships. But when we are in that beginning phase of starting and growing a business, it's so easy to compare ourselves to other people and get lost in the competition. Well, they're already Mm -hmm. doing that. So I can't do it. But like you said, God made each and every one of us so incredibly unique and mm-hmm. he is cheering us on to get out there and do exactly what he's called us to do. And we yeah. lose sight of that when we have all of these distractions. So you said yeah. that so eloquently, but I just wanted to p- point that out that comparison can, you know, really strip us of joy. And when that yeah. happens, we can't hear him. And just yeah. getting still, like you said, empowers us to be able to hear his calling hear his purpose for us and then move through the actions to be able to accomplish it. So, okay. okay. Go ahead. ahead. Well, I was gonna say you, you mentioned comparison and I think we, we don't just compare online. We see that, but it's like, we're not just inspired then it's like, we start taking on stuff. You know what I'm saying? We see what somebody else is doing and we start taking it, taking it on. And that's, I talk a lot about living intentionally. And I think that ties into that because I think if we don't, if we're not strong and standing in, in who we are and where we're going, that makes it so easy to take on all those things. And I think women are the worst at this. <laughs> women are the worst. Of uh, Like with their friend circle, it's like everybody starts doing the same thing and they're all involved in the same activities. All their kids are signing up for the same thing. That's great if that's what you're supposed to do. But it's like 
nobody's stopping and going, okay, does, does my kid really need to be doing this? Do I need to be involved in all these things? But we just get caught up in doing what everybody else is doing. And I think that's where the tension of life comes in. And we start feeling this tension because we're not in alignment with who we are. Um, we're living from somebody else's opinion and their desires. And that affects us at some point. At some point, it's going to come out in our mind. And we're going to that's when we're stressed and we're anxious and all those things are our body. And we're having you know health issues and all that because our body's telling us you were not designed and created to live the life that you're trying to live. You're yeah. trying to live this person you saw online and who knows the backstory you're just seeing in the little square, what their life looks like. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to, to live that and you don't have the capacity or the wiring or design. So, yeah. And that's where I think living by our values comes into play. Yeah. yeah so if absolutely. what, if what you see other people doing, and I, I know the listeners have heard me preach on this before because it drives me crazy. All this um, like new age, woo woo, you know, manifest this and, use mm -hmm. this, you know, whatever crystals or whatever to, to grow your yeah. business. And it's like, okay, if, if that is not aligned with you because you're a Christian, then don't do that because it's only going to bring you down. It's going to strip you of right. what is truly valuable within yourself. And mm -hmm. I, so I love, I love that you say that because really aligning with your values adhering those to those values. Cause when you do that, you don't succumb to what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Right. No, I agree. Okay. So tell us about the journal because I love your concept. It's such a unique business model. I mean, we know there are journals galore online, Yeah, but you yeah. have created something that is so unique and different. And that is what personal branding is all about is really differentiating yourself and you're doing that through not only your day-to-day -day with the community, how you communicate and the content you put out and everything else, but you are doing that with this unique and differentiated model for your journal. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, and let me say, because I think sometimes we try so hard to, because you're saying stand out and differentiate. I think sometimes we're trying so hard to that because you hear niche down and be known for this one thing. And as somebody that is multi-passionate, I've struggled with that. Um, but it's almost like you have to relax in what I've just been talking about and being growing into growing up into who you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, because we can try so hard of like, okay, I need to find some of this creative thing that nobody's ever done before and all that. And it's like, I love journals, but yeah, honestly, then if I ever thought of that, it was like, like, oh, well, there's so many journals, what would that be? And it's almost like this then just came to be. It was almost like then as hard as I had tried through the past several years. So like, how does all, the, how does the podcast, how does all this fit together? It's like, it all just came together of a way that I can serve people. And, and I say journal, um, sometimes it's like, I, I use the word journaling, um, but sometimes it's like, I want, I would like to say writing instead of journaling, because I think people then think this certain process of like, I got a journal every day and write this certain thing. And really it is that, um, that practice of writing. And I mean, there's you, I think, you know, this and I've talked about that. I mean, there's like scientific studies that talk about when we write what it does in our brain. And it is just this incredible, beautiful process that to me is sacred um, mm -hmm. in that time when, um, and sometimes I even hate to say what I do in that time that, of creating, because I think that people are like, Oh, well, she does this. So now, so I need to do it this way again. That's where we mess up. It's like, God's so much bigger than that. And he's going to speak to us in our language and how he wants to connect with us. But of, for me, like a, of reading scripture and praying, and then as I start to journal, sometimes it's just like, then it's almost like this cleansing and processing thing takes yeah. place, yeah. you know, that just starts coming out. That's so great, but it's in the context of that time with him. Mm -hmm. So instead of just me staying in all that, it's like enveloped in his truth mm -hmm. and the connection with him. So it's just, it's a beautiful time that is a sacred time and a form of prayer and meditation and, and, and all of that. Um, but so I am, I'm very excited in this. And I feel like, I, I mean, what my intention has been to like create it in a way that I, there's a framework, but there's also freedom to make it your own. Um, Cause I didn't want it to be something where like they, like 
I'm moving through the season and if I miss a day, then I've messed up and then to toss it aside and like, okay, I'll start it because <laughs> we, we, we all have too many journals that we've done that in. Um, so I wanted it to be though something because like I said, if you go to back to podcast episodes or my emails, you definitely see a theme of how I tend to speak and like a message th that I want to share comes out that just kind of flows with the natural seasons that we experience in life. And because it's just so intertwined mm -hmm. of our life and our spiritual life, everything about us and how it just weaves in and out of that and, and how every season's so needed. And there's something beautiful in every season, even in the hard ones that you, mm -hmm. when you're in the middle of it, you're like, there's nothing beautiful about this moment. You get some seasons away and you look back and go, wow, I see the fruit from that hard time and the stuff that came out through that dark, that dry winter dirt, you know, something that as then it was watered and tended to stuff that came up. And um, so the, the thought is, and the intention is to every season walk through. So like this spring is 13 weeks. So every week there's a focus page. And so um, I share uh, just uh, like just something small, like a share focus thing of what like this week is as we're le walking through spring together. And then there's some journal prompts and the journal prompts aren't on each page. They're kind of on that focus page. Um, and you can, because I think different prompts are going to speak, you know, depending on where you're at in the season of spring, you're going to, some things you might just think about some things you might write two or three pages on, or so it's, it's kind of up to you how you want to do that. But there's the journal prompts, and then there's also a QR code on that same page for the week that you can scan, and it will take you to podcast episodes where this is talked about in different audios and, and videos that have to do with that week's focus. It also takes you each week has an art piece specifically for that week, and the art that's in each book is only available to people that have the journal. So I, that was, I thought that was kind of neat. I mean, I still will be selling art in other ways, but this is just something to me that's, that's connected for the journal users and walking through this because um, I know there might be a certain week that's really speaking to them and that piece resonates with them. And they're like, you know what? I would like to have that in my home as a remembrance of this time and this season and what God was doing mm -hmm. in my life. So um, it kind of just walks you through those 13 weeks and, of spring and all that that represents. And um, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be a neat tool in the in the beginning of the book, the, the journal. Um, I kind of lay some groundwork about daily rhythms and intentions and how important that is um, mm -hmm. in, in our life to have. So that's kind of like the groundwork in that of intentionally showing up and mm -hmm. like, okay, God, you know, what? What's going to happen this season? What are you doing in me? Because he's always yeah. doing something. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, always. And sometimes I'm like, wait a second, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Susan, yeah. I am so grateful you were here with us today. And I love this, this whole entire model that you've created with the journal. I love that you are giving additional resources with the podcast. And honestly, mm -hmm. from a business perspective, I'm going to flip the switch here for a second. It's brilliant yeah. because- that just helps you rank higher from the podcast perspective, right? So, and yeah, then yeah. you have the opportunity to, and I know you did not do this from like with the intention of making a bunch of money, you did this from a heart of service, but I mm -hmm. want to emphasize how, when we come from a place of service, our efforts are blessed and yeah. you now have an opportunity to create additional revenue sources by selling mm -hmm. the art, you know, yeah. sending people to the podcast, growing your audience on those, you know, in that platform while right. giving people a tool that can change and transform their lives. And we Definitely. know that anytime we can help people transform, whether growing in their faith or, or whatever, we're giving them an opportunity to change the trajectory of their life, then their children's yes. life. And it's that domino effect of good, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. kudos to you. I'm so proud of you. I'm you. so honored that you were with us today. And I cannot wait to see all these different seasons of journals. So Susan, how can the listeners connect with you, learn more about you, follow you? Okay. Um, on Instagram, I'm Susan B. Morris. And um, I'm not that's probably where I am the most. I mean, I don't spend a lot of time during the day being on it, but I do. Um, that is a way I connect through 
the DMs there with people from the podcast and on social. So that's probably the, the main place to reach out. But then also my website is susanbeth.com. And that will have the information of how you can get a hold of the journal if you go there. And if you are interested, I'm not sure when this will be airing, <laughs> um, but the spring one will be available to jump in. And the first day of June, uh, spring is March 20th. So um, I'm excited about that. And then the summer will be rolling out a few months after that, but I'm excited. And thank you so much, Robin, for, for having, having me on today. I've enjoyed connecting and chatting with you again. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. Listeners, if you feel inspired, which I can't imagine you don't, um, would you please leave a rating and review for us and share this episode with someone you love? We all need just additional resources for inspiration and just building each other up. And I think this episode is a great way to help someone maybe find extra comfort through faith, through God. Um, maybe, you know, just hearing Susan's voice and and having that additional sense of comfort that we're all in this together and that every part of our journey is a season and we can get through it when we be still and let God guide us. So, all right, Susan, thanks so much for being here. Listeners, thank Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you all and I'll see you all next week.